As the theme song goes, Fran Fine was working in a bridal shop in Flushing, Queens till her boyfriend kicked her out in one of those crushing scenes. What was she to do? Where was she to go? Why, over the bridge from Flushing to the Sheffield store, of course, for six seasons of laughs on the nanny. <laughs> Co-created by star Fran Drescher, The Nanny was a huge hit for CBS. So it makes sense that the network would use The Nanny to try to launch a spin-off about another chatty cast of characters. Yes, the spin-off about Fran's salon, The Chatterbox. But would these new characters be as hilarious as Fran, Niles, and the rest of The Nanny Gang? Find out on Behind the Backdoor Pilot, The Nanny. Sitcoms and backdoor pilots go together like Fran and a Loman's shopping spree. On the surface, backdoor pilots seem like normal episodes of your favorite TV series, but they're actually secret pilots for new shows. One backdoor pilot trick is to use a setting that fits into the world of the show. For instance, Punky Brewster tried to launch a spinoff set at the orphanage Fenster Hall. Ostensibly, this shared location could provide opportunities for the nanny characters to pop in to visit a new spin-off series. So when it came time to launch a spin-off of The Nanny, the producers chose Fran's favorite salon, The Chatterbox, as the setting. The season two episode, appropriately titled The Chatterbox, starts like any other nanny episode with Niles serving up an ice-cold diss. Niles, my eggs are all dried up. The gene pool is saved. <laughs> But right away, we learn about a brand new character, hunky hairdresser, Mr. Anthony. Maggie, don't forget, you have an appointment with Mr. Anthony at the Chatterbox to get your hair done this afternoon. Get ready, because this episode really tries to make Mr. Anthony happen. I'm very satisfied. We then meet the Fran of the proposed spinoff, Mary Ruth. She's an aspiring actress who shows up to an audition Mr. Sheffield is holding in his home for some reason. What is Mr. Sheffield casting here? Models Inc. the musical? Mary Ruth is played by Tracy Nelson, an acting legacy whose family starred on the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. But that's not all. Her uncle is Mark Harmon, and her brothers are rock duo Nelson. And your grandparents may recognize Tracy Nelson from the Father Dowling Mysteries. Mary Ruth's audition does not go well, and we learn she has something in common with Fran. Honey, how much are you paying this acting teacher? Nothing. We were living together until he threw me out for an actress with more talent. <gasps> yes, Mary Ruth's boyfriend also kicked her out in one of those crushing scenes. Luckily, Fran has a hookup at the Chatterbox. I'm on my way to the Chatterbox salon and someone told me that they need a new shampoo girl. And we meet a brand new cast of characters. There's hairstylist Claude, the snarky Niles of the backdoor pilot. What do you mean she's canceling her four o'clock of Mr. Anthony? You can't cancel on Mr. Anthony without a 48 hour notice. Well, when did she die? Claude is played by Edward Hibbert, who also portrayed snooty food critic Gil Chesterton on Frasier. This is my last little man, I promise. <laughs> mm. Oh, Gil, who are you kidding? They're kind of the same character. Next, we meet manicurist Kim, who creates very detailed nail art. This is my country. That's my sister. <laughs> That's her husband. <laughs> And that's the cat. Friends fans will recognize Lauren Tom from her stint as Julie, the kind, gentle soul who dared to come between Ross and Rachel. While Futurama fans know the versatile performer as the voice of Amy. I used to be too cute, so I had cuteness reduction surgery here and here. Finally, there's the Mr. Sheffield of the backdoor pilot, the much aforementioned Mr. Anthony. <laughs> What's new, pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. Mr. Anthony is played by Patrick Cassidy, who, like Tracy Nelson, is an acting legacy. Yep, he's a Cassidy. Patrick Cassidy is no stranger to singing and dancing. He starred in the short-lived Dirty Dancing sitcom opposite Jan from The Office. Mr. Anthony is like Travolta in Saturday Night Fever with a dash of sex criminal. She's invited to her first Sweet 16 party. Oh, you're 16, you're beautiful, and you're mine. <laughs> Fran Drescher has aged well, but that joke hasn't. Our two backdoor pilot leads finally meet, 
and Mary Ruth proves she's an 11 on the quirky sitcom lead scale. Before we start, I think it's only fair to warn you that I am first and foremost an actress. And at any moment, I may get a lead on Broadway. Or, Merv Griffin could call and want a game show hostess. And it could all happen so quickly. In show business, they needed you yesterday. Do you sweep? Yes. Yeah, hi. Bless you, Mr. After a brief scene where Fran tries to talk Ma out of applying for a job at the Chatterbox. Daddy doesn't want you to work. Who's going to feed him lunch? What, he can't add water to the top ramen himself? The nanny characters we know and love vanish. And the rest of the episode focuses on the Chatterbox crew. Mary Ruth gets a job at the Chatterbox and a place to live. Hey, you can stay in the back room not really fit for a human being. Oh, and when my mother comes, you gotta get out. While Kim notices Mary Ruth has the hots for Mr. Anthony, setting up a will they or won't they scenario for the potential series. Guess she can't resist a guy butchering a Robert Palmer song. Might as well face it, you're addicted to love. Yeah. And since it's an episode of The Nanny, we also get plenty of racy double entendres. So, how was your first day? Long, hard, good. And dated jokes. I don't really know Queens. Oh, well, now you know one. Charles. You're Jewish? No, I marry one. They make good husband. Every Sunday night, he in the mood for Chinese. We also discover that Mr. Anthony has a son named Mimo, who dresses like a kid in a Gogurt commercial. Fun fact, the actor who played Mimo appeared as a totally different character in an earlier season two episode. Those sneaky producers thought they could get one past nanny superfans. It seems Mr. Anthony is nursing a broken heart from his ex, and that's having a bad effect on Mimo. She break Mr. Anthony's heart, and when she left him, he'd punch out the glass. Mm, not to mention the mailbox, the dumpster. Sister Mary Margaret. Well, that was an accident. Oh boy, she went down like a ton of bricks. Mary Ruth intervenes, and Mr. Anthony doesn't take it well. You know, it's so obvious what's going on here. Yeah, you're about to get fired. Hmm, a quirky gal getting involved in the life of her single dad employer? Sounds awfully familiar. Oh my God, it's me! Mary Ruth tries to repair the rift between Mr. Anthony and his son by repairing the photo of Mimo's mom. Nobody wants this picture. I do. And just for the record, uh, she walked out on me, not you. In the end, Mary Ruth keeps her job and Mr. Anthony learns a lesson about being a better father. Unfortunately for the Chatterbox crew, the backdoor pilot never went to series. It's over. We split up. No! Don't say that! CBS decided not to greenlight the spinoff because they felt the premise was too similar to The Nanny. Besides, CBS would never greenlight a carbon copy of a hit series. Patrick Cassidy believes the Chatterbox never went to series because the network couldn't figure out what the show would be without Fran Drescher. As Cassidy said in the book Spinning Laughter, Fran's involvement made the network think it was just another episode of The Nanny, as opposed to its own show about these characters from Flushing who work at a hair salon. While the Chatterbox failed to launch, The Nanny developed a loyal fan following. Fran and the gang are even making a comeback with a recent Zoom reunion and an upcoming Broadway musical. As for the Chatterbox crew, they were resigned to the failed spin-off graveyard. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Atomic Abe for more videos about backdoor pilots, including the episode of Martin that tried to launch a spinoff for Pam.